So you're planning a trip to Europe, and maybe you've seen videos like this one that have you convinced you need to pack carry-on only. And you really should, but now you're freaking out because how on earth are you going to survive 10 days to two weeks in a foreign country with carry-on only and still look great for all your pictures? In this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how I pack for a 10 day to two week trip to Europe in just carry-on bags. Hey guys, Allie from Away Together. My husband Nick and I have traveled extensively throughout Europe. I've always done carry-on only, and you guys have asked to see what I pack, so I'm here to answer. I'm gonna show you what I pack, how I pack, and I'll also share a few tips on things you don't need to bring. Some smart replacements that you can make in your toiletry bag so TSA will take it easy on you, and how I design a capsule wardrobe that keeps my packing list light and stylish. Let's dive in. First, I wanna give you three actionable tips that have really helped me become a more conscientious lighter packer. First and foremost, be realistic with what you actually need for your trip. It's so common to overpack, and I honestly think this could be one of the main reasons why. We start to pack our bags, and all of a sudden, we start thinking we need things we don't realistically even use in our daily life, and somehow those things make their way into our bags. For example, I personally never really wear hats, so I shouldn't be packing one for a 10 day trip to Europe because it's highly unlikely I'll wear it. If you know loosely your itinerary and what the weather will be at your destination, you can use that information to make informed, realistic decisions when you pack your bags. Space is limited, you guys. Beyond what you pack, how you pack is so important. You need to be strategic. I am personally a two bag traveler. I have my carry-on size roller bag plus my personal item backpack. Two things that I always do that have helped with maximizing the space I have in my main carry-on is first, I pack my toiletries and my makeup in my personal item backpack versus my carry-on. This not only saves space in my main bag, but it also helps for easier access to these toiletries when I go through security. Secondly, I wear my heaviest, bulkiest shoes and clothes on travel days. This is a common tip, but so useful. For my last tip, for the most part, it is likely you're gonna be traveling to a place where you can buy common or even random necessities if needed, or they might even be provided for you. This mindset has helped me save so much space on my carry-on during our travels. For example, I rarely pack things like an umbrella, large cans of sunscreen, soap, because when we travel, I can always buy those things if I end up needing them. The same goes for a hairdryer. I never bring one. And that's because our hotel or Airbnb usually provides them. And this is honestly such a space saver in my carry-on. All right, guys, with those tips in mind, let's jump into the main event. In terms of what I pack in my bag, there are generally three categories, clothes, toiletries, and electronics. Clothes make up a majority of what I pack, so let's start there. Generally, there are two principles that guide me in deciding what clothes to pack. First, I try to make sure everything coordinates. That way, I can build multiple outfits with a limited number of items that I bring. This is generally considered a capsule wardrobe. Second, I prioritize bringing pieces that are lightweight, layerable, and wrinkle resistant. For a 10 day trip to Europe, I would generally pack one pair of jeans or pants and one pair of leggings, these are your only pair of each of these, so make sure they're comfortable to you. I always pack one skirt if the weather season permits, although you may prefer a pair of shorts. I personally love the skirt because I like to bring one that has a fun pattern because most of my other clothing pieces are solid colors to allow for versatility. I pack two dresses, usually one that is a maxi and one that is a shorter dress. I like for one of these options to be a bit dressier if needed. I bring one cardigan. This is a great way to make an outfit feel different. You can add this to a dress with a different pair of shoes and it feels like a totally different outfit. This one I pack is made of merino wool, so it's soft and lightweight, but will still keep you warm as a layerable piece. I always bring two to three t-shirts, tank tops, and or long sleeves depending on the season. I love these boxy pocket tees, which are also made of merino wool. Merino is great for travel because it's lightweight, wrinkle and odor resistant, which allows you to pack less and build a simple capsule wardrobe. These pieces are from a company called Unbound Merino, which I'm sure you've heard us talk about on our channel. Unbound Merino was created by travelers for travelers. With quality versatile items like these pocket tees or their cashmere wool cardigan, 
Unbound Merino wants to help you travel lighter while staying stylish. Because their clothing is focused on simplicity and minimalism, it's the perfect choice to start building your wardrobe essentials, particularly with travel in mind. Unbound Merino is the sponsor of today's video, and if you wanna check them out, for a limited time, they're offering an exclusive coupon code to Away Together viewers. And you can get 10% off if you use the code Away Together. Links below. Now seriously, go buy the boxy pocket tee and thank me later. Now on top of those t-shirts, I will usually bring one to two dressier shirt options. Usually a button up or some sort of blouse that I can dress up in case we go to a nice dinner. I will pack two pairs of shoes, not including the tennis shoes that I will wear on the plane. These options will vary depending on the season, but most of the time it includes an alternative to the sneakers for walking, something like a Birkenstock sandal, and something dressier, like a closed-toed flat. In one of my smaller packing cubes, I'll have my basics. So three to five pairs of wool socks, 10 plus pair of underwear, because let's be real, those don't really take up much room, and an extra bra or bralette, and maybe a swimsuit if I need it. I'll also have clothes specifically for sleep. Usually this is either a light pair of sleep shorts and shirt or just a sleep shirt. Hey guys, if you are getting value out of this video, please make sure to like it and subscribe so that YouTube knows to suggest it to other travelers like you. For accessories like jewelry, I've recently simplified. I used to pack multiple options in this flat jewelry organizer like this, which doesn't take up much room, but what I realized is I ended up not wearing much of what I brought. I mostly stuck to what I wear daily, which is small gold hoop earrings, a small necklace, and a couple of bracelets. With this approach, I can wear everything on a travel day and not worry about packing anything extra, but a flat jewelry organizer is a great option for those that want variety. Finally, I have two jackets I'll bring. One of them is a Patagonia packable rain jacket. It packs down so tiny and barely takes up any space. I'll also bring some other sort of jacket. Usually this one is for warmth and style. My personal go-to is a good jean jacket, but this could also be a puffer if it's colder. I'll always wear this jacket on the plane to save space, but I also try to make sure whatever option I bring, I could pack it in my bag in a pinch. Now, I totally understand that this is not a lot, and there will likely be pieces that you rewear. I would say that's the beauty in something like merino wool, since it's antimicrobial and odor resistant, but we're also very strategic about where we stay on slightly longer trips. We usually book at least one Airbnb that'll have a washing machine. And I know, I know, laundry on vacation, alley, seriously? <laughs> but I will take doing a small load of laundry before bed over lugging a massive suitcase around the cobblestone streets of Europe. All right, let's move on to toiletries. I have talked toiletries a lot on this channel. A quick run through of what's in my toiletry bag and my TSA liquids bag. In my toiletry bag, I will have my travel toothbrush, hairbrush, contacts, a couple ponytails, solid deodorant, a razor, a sunscreen stick, and dry shampoo. Now, I swear by these two types of products. They are necessities, and typically they're found in liquid or aerosol form, but getting them in solid form saves space in my liquids bag. I also pack any medicine, prescription pills, or supplements that I need to take on my travels. Those all go in my toiletry bag, plus, all of my makeup and brushes that don't have to go into a liquids bag. Now in my TSA liquids bag, you will find a small shampoo and conditioner, silicone tubes filled with any liquid hair products that I can't live without, face wash and moisturizer, small perfume samples, which is a great hack to bring fragrance but not take up a ton of space, toothpaste, and my liquid makeup. This mostly means my concealer, foundation, and mascara. Most of the other makeup that I use is powder and goes in my toiletry bag. Now for electronics. Nick is usually my mule for most anything electronic or tech, but there are a few basics that I always carry personally. I always make sure to have my own personal travel adapter. The one I have is just this small one that I got off Amazon, but I usually bum a few slots off Nick's Epica Universal Travel Adapter. If you're in the market for a travel adapter, this is the one I would recommend. I also always travel with my iPhone, so I have to remember my charger. Fingers crossed I haven't forgotten it yet. My travel day ride or dies are a pair of noise canceling headphones for the plane and my Amazon Kindle. 
My personal favorite headphones are these Sony noise canceling Bluetooth headphones. The only other electronic item that I pack is my hair tool, which I use the LaAnge Le Duo Airflow Styler. I love this because I can straighten or curl my hair with it. And that's pretty much it. I think the only other item that I pack that doesn't really fall into any of these categories is my Owala water bottle. Okay, let's pack everything up. I am a big proponent of packing cubes. This helps you stay organized and it will help compress everything down to save space. I will use two large cubes to pack a majority of my clothes. So this is where all of my shirts, dresses, and leggings will go. There will be a few items that I decide not to put into a packing cube, mostly because they're either too bulky or they just roll up better. So think something like jeans. These cubes go into the main zipper compartment of my bag. Today, I'm packing the level eight hard shell carry-on. On the lid side of the bag, I'll pack basically everything else. My shoes, my hair styler, smaller basics that are in this small packing cube, my rain jacket, and my travel adapter. If there are any clothing items that didn't fit into the main compartment, I will lay those flat on top of everything that's on this lid side before I buckle down and secure the straps. Basically, with your main carry-on bag, you're just trying to piece together the most effective puzzle. Utilize all of your space, be willing to unpack, repack, and adjust as needed until you find the right configuration for what you're trying to bring. For my personal item backpack, I'm using the Everlane Renew Transit Backpack. This backpack has gone to over 18 plus countries with me and it fits a ton. I'll put my Amazon Kindle into the electronic sleeve, my toiletry bag and my liquids bags will go into the bottom of the main compartment. On top of those, I'll put my Sony Bluetooth headphones. In these outer pockets, I'll put my iPhone charger and any other small items I like to have quick access to like hand sanitizer, disinfecting wipes, chapstick. My Owala water bottle slips easily into this side pocket. Now, I will usually wear a small crossbody purse separate from this personal item bag. And I haven't had any issue with that, but just know that your mileage may vary. And that's it. That is everything I pack and how I pack it for a standard European trip. If you've got a trip to Europe coming up soon, make sure to watch this video about common European travel mistakes to avoid. Thanks for watching and happy travels.